Now in 2018, I'm noticing a very interesting and not entirely unexpected trend of iPhone users jumping ship for Android instead. Basically, the majority of them are just sick of paying through the nose for pretty much the same device year after year. And let's face it, there's not exactly a cheap option when it comes to iOS. Which therefore makes it all the more interesting that the Android phone they're most interested in is the Pixel 2 XL. After all, Google's handset still costs from 799 quid here in the UK, despite being almost a year old, which places it alongside the iPhone 8 Plus as one of the most expensive blowers about. But you know, at least you do get free delivery. And unlike with iOS, it's perfectly possible to get more affordable Androids that still pack strong performance and some rather brilliant camera tech. So the question I'm asking here is, is the Pixel 2 XL actually worth picking up now with the Pixel 3 just around the corner and so many more affordable Androids available to buy? Well, I've recently returned to the Pixel 2 XL with a bit of Android P beta slapped lovingly on top and I'm actually really, really enjoying it again, but not quite enough to recommend it. The Pixel 2 XL seemed like a bit of a beast when it hit the UK at the end of last year, but these days it sits quite contently amongst an army of 6-inch plus smartphones. Honestly, at this rate, we'll probably all need briefcases to carry around our mobiles by 2019, like it's the mother 80s all over again. Either way, Google's Pixel design has basically been the mobile equivalent of Marmite ever since the launch, with some reviewers and consumers absolutely slating the combination glass and metal finish. Personally, I've always found it quite alluring, at least that is until rather recently. I've got to admit it, the Pixel 2 XL just seems a wee bit dull these days. I think I've just been spoiled rotten by colourful, beautiful beasts like the Huawei P20 Pro. Ooh, look, shiny, shiny. I mean, this right here is the equivalent of smartphone smut. Pure filth. Dive into the software and one of the Pixel's advantages over its rivals is the fact that it runs a vanilla version of Android, unburdened with any clunky overlays or anything like that. That means instant access to any Android updates, timely security patches and of course full access to the Android P beta. So far, Android P seems absolutely fine, if rather unremarkable. Lots of stuff such as the app switcher and the notifications tabs have been tweaked and touched up here and there, but the new features aren't really anything to write home about so far. Like for instance how you can now see the current weather with just a quick glance of your lock screen. Or of course perhaps by simply looking up at the sky if you can actually tear your eyes off your smartphone for more than half a second. I've got to admit, when I go back to the Pixel, I do find myself missing some of the features that other manufacturers add to Android via their overlays. Such as, for instance, a decent one-handed mode. All you get here is the ability to pull down the notifications tab with a quick swipe of the fingerprint sensor. Good, but not quite enough. And while there's a form of facial recognition in Android's trusted face feature, it's definitely more sketchy and cumbersome to use than rival versions from the likes of Huawei and OnePlus. Plus, if you really do want a virgin form of Android, the likes of Nokia and Motorola offer handsets at a fraction of the cost which provide exactly that. Of course, the Pixel 2 XL does offer a couple of bonus features that you won't find on any rivals, at least for the most part. For instance, a quick squeeze launches the Google Assistant, which is pretty neat even if HTC already did it first. I don't use the Assistant, and unfortunately there's no way of reassigning that squeeze functionality, which is kind of a shame, but there you go. And I'd probably appreciate the song identification feature more if it actually recognised any kind of music that I was really genuinely interested in. The Pixel 2 XL loves radio-friendly pap, but gives zero f**ks about 99% of my Spotify collection which admittedly is the kind of shouty obscure rock music enjoyed by angry adolescents with a penchant for far too much mascara. So what about the good stuff? There must be some good stuff, right? Well, one of the Pixel's better features is its support for Google's Daydream platform, which is its own virtual reality effort. This is absolutely packed with great games and experiences, making it a solid rival for the likes of Samsung's Gear VR, for instance. And even now, very few non-Pixel phones are Daydream compliant, so you have to look long and hard. When it comes to media, Google's mighty mobile still impresses there too. Images look fantastic and the stereo speakers sound pretty damn good for a mobile, although you will need a dongly thing to connect wired headphones. But where the Pixel 2 XL really does excel is the smart camera tech. This handset is still one of the best smartphone snappers out there. You might not get the triple lens setup of the Huawei P20 Pro complete with its optical zoom or the nifty wide angle secondary lens of that LG G7, but the Pixel's single eye simply catches gorgeous photos and video with none of those frills necessary. It's less flexible, sure, but you really can't argue with the results. And Google's portrait mode uses software smarts to great effect, producing snaps that easily stand up to its multi-lens rivals. Battery life is still brilliant too, among the best Androids right now. I still get close to two days of use per charge without being frugal, and that fast charge support means that the battery refills in just over an hour. I've got no complaints with the performance either, even if the Pixel is fast approaching its first birthday and doesn't support the latest Snapdragon 845 chipset something that you'll find in the OnePlus 6, Sony's Xperia XZ2, and a few other Android flagships. But despite these strengths, the Pixel 2 XL really is still a tricky recommendation as we roll on towards the end of 2018, especially considering the arrivals such as the OnePlus 6, which offer much of the same strengths with fewer of the weaknesses for less cost. 
To put it bluntly, there isn't one standout feature in here that you won't find at another rival and generally for less of a price. So that right there is what I think of the Pixel 2 XL as we fast approach the launch of the Pixel 3. Do you think I'm a little bit too harsh on it or do you reckon that's about fair? Let us know in the comments below. Definitely good to hear your thoughts. Don't be too abusive, right guys? <laughs> as if you would. And don't forget to give us a subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech, including that Pixel 3.